Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist based in Vienna, Austria. About a month and a half ago, I tested the heart rate accuracy of the Garmin Venue SQ and I found it had some very serious problems. In the comments, a lot of people wondered if that had to do with having the watch set to smart recording instead of the more data intensive every second recording. In this video, I put that to the test by changing the settings on the device and testing it on myself but also by looking at some data that a subscriber recorded for me. To give you some conclusions up front, I did see a significant improvement in the heart rate accuracy of the Garmin Venue SQ. However, I do not think this is due to a change in settings. I actually think this is due to a recent software update. And in this video, I'll try to show you why I think that is. As always, I'll try to be concise as to not waste your time. Also, timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. Let's have a look at the results. Now, just so you know what to expect, first I'll show you a brief summary of my previous results, then I'll analyze the new data with the new settings, and finally I'll analyze the data of one of my subscribers. As always, as a reference, I'll use the Polar H10 chest strap, which is generally considered to be one of the most accurate consumer devices available for heart rate measurements. On the other hand, the subscriber that shared his data with me used the Garmin chest strap as a reference. This is the result I showed you in my previous video. Each dot here is a single measurement, where on the horizontal axis we have the heart rate according to the Polar H10, and on the vertical axis we have the heart rate according to the Garmin Venue SQ. And if the heart rate measurements agrees between the two, it will be along this blue line. And if they don't agree, they will be away from this blue line. So the further away from the blue line they are, the worse the result. Given the number of measurements that are plotted here, a lot of them will overlap, so I made the dot somewhat transparent. So the darker gray or black a certain region, the more measurements are there. So what you can see is that indeed there are a lot of measurements along this diagonal here. But there are also a lot of measurements that are not along this diagonal. So a lot of measurements where the venue SQ and the Polar H10 did not agree. Especially here we can see a big blob of measurements where they do not agree. Now I'll show you just a few examples of what caused this. Here you can see an example plot for one workout with the time on the horizontal axis and my heart rate on the vertical axis. The Garmin Venue SQ is plotted in red and the Polar H10 in blue. And what you can see is the Venue SQ often lags behind the Polar H10. So the Polar H10 increases and the Venue SQ increases later and also the decrease is slightly lagged. And this is the type of pattern I saw consistently for my Venue SQ in the previous video. Let me show you two more examples. Here we see an even more extreme example where it misses my increase in heart rate for the first part of the training completely and it lags behind for a lot of the others. And again, we see something similar for this training session where it lags behind at an increase in heart rate and it also lags behind at a decrease in heart rate. Now let's take a look at how these results compare to the new results I obtained when changing the settings to every second recording. This is a similar plot to what I showed you before with the heart rate according to the Polar H10 on the horizontal axis and the heart rate according to the Venue HQ on the vertical axis. And what we see now is that there are many more points along this blue line and far fewer points away from the blue line. There is this cloud of points again here that is not along the blue line, but overall there are relatively many points along the blue line compared to before. At a first glance, this seems to indicate that after changing the settings to every second recording, the agreement between the Garmin Venue SQ and the Polar H10 is better. Let's have a look at the previous results and these results side by side. That's what we see here with the new results on the left and the old results on the right. And as you can see in the new results, there are relatively many points along this axis here and here and relatively few points away from the axis where you can see there are fewer points here along this blue line and many more points away from it in the old results. Interestingly, in the new measurements, I noticed that the ones with the most mistakes were often the training sessions that I did relatively early on. Let's have a look at that. This is the first training session I recorded after changing the settings. Again, the Polar H10 is plotted in blue and the Garmin Venue SQ in red. 
with time along the horizontal axis and heart rate along the vertical axis. And as you can see, this training session has very similar problems to before, with a lag in the increase in heart rate and also a lag in the decrease in heart rate, and it even misses this first part of the training completely. And we can see that for the next few training sessions, the problems were very similar, though sometimes to a lesser degree. For instance, for this training session, we do see this delay and decrease and increase in heart rate, though it is less severe. But for this training session, for instance, it was very similar to the first one I showed you. And again, for this training session, we see something similar with a lag in the increase and decrease in heart rate, though it is less severe. But interestingly, after this training session, I noticed that a firmware upgrade was available for the watch. And after I installed it, the results seemed to be much better. Now, I only have two days of training for this, but as you will see, the results appear to be much better. So this is one of those two training sessions. As you can see, the heart rates agree much better. There might be a slight delay here, but it's not as significant as before. And if we look at the last training session, we see something very similar, a much better agreement in heart rate between the Garmin SQ and the Polar H10. And we see something similar for weight training, something that the Venue SQ also struggled with before. And that's what I've plotted here. Now the agreement is not perfect, so sometimes the Venue SQ does not pick up on this increase in heart rate, but overall this is much better than what we saw before. Finally, let's see if these findings agree with the results I get when analyzing the data the subscriber shared with me. Before I show you those results, if you own any type of wearable and also track your heart rate with a chest strap, it would be great if you would be willing to share that data with me. By doing that, I can ensure that any test that I do is valid for multiple people and not just for myself. And additionally, I could test many different wearables without having to buy each and every one, which would be good both for my bank account and for the environment. If you're willing to consider this, that's great. I'll leave my contact information in the description below. For now, let's take a look at the results for the Venue SQ. Here you can see those results with the heart rate according to the chest strap on the horizontal axis and the heart rate according to the Venue SQ on the vertical axis. And you can see there's very good agreement between the two. You can still see this small cloud of points here where the heart rate was a bit lower according to the SQ than it was in reality. But overall, the results agree pretty well. Now let's see if for the subscriber, the results also increased over time as at some point he installed the firmware update. Though I must admit, I'm not sure if and when he did this. So this will just be a small hint towards confirming the results that I saw before. Here we see one example training session with again the Venue SQ in red and the chest strap in blue. For this training session, the results agree pretty well. Now I'll walk you through each of the training sessions over time and we'll see if the results get better or worse. Here you see the next training session and you can see a big disagreement between the chest strap and the Garmin Venue SQ. For this training session, you see a problem perhaps somewhat similar to what I had, where there was this delay and increase in heart rate of the Venue SQ. This training session agrees pretty well, though we have this small deviation here at the beginning of the training. And this next training session shows something similar, where at the beginning of the training it needs some time to catch up with the actual heart rate. But then, as we move further in time, there does seem to be some indication that the results start to agree even better between the Garmin Venue SQ and the chest strap. Also, if we look at this training session, the results agree very well. And the same appears to be true for this training session here, and also a lot of the ones that follow. If we look at this training session, the agreement is pretty good. Also for this one, this one, and also finally the last training session. So this potentially agrees with the suggestion I made that a recent firmware update to the Garmin Venue SQ improved its heart rate accuracy. So it does appear as if the heart rate tracking accuracy of the Garmin Venue SQ has improved substantially since I first started using it. And as I showed you in this video, I suspect this is due to firmware upgrades and not due to a change in settings. This also makes sense if you look at how Garmin describes the two settings. Garmin says that smart recording records key points where the fitness device changes direction, speed, heart rate or elevation. This recording type allows the user extended recording time given that it's recording fewer data points, thereby taking up less memory. Every second recording on the other hand records the activity information every second no matter if the device changes direction, speed, heart rate or elevation. Now this recording type provides a more detailed log of your activity, but of course recording time will be reduced given that it takes up more memory. 
The way I interpret this, this means that it should only affect how many data points are getting saved, getting rid of redundant ones, and it should not change the actual data itself. This would mean it is basically a form of compression. I guess this is still useful, for instance, when running a marathon, though I wonder if data storage should still be the major limitation of devices nowadays. Overall, I'm now much more positive about the heart rate tracking accuracy of the Garmin Venue SQ. And that also goes to show that as time goes on, firmware updates can really improve the accuracy of different devices. I'm currently working on videos on the sleep tracking accuracy of Apple Watch apps, which should release around Christmas. But after that, I also plan to test the accuracy of the sleep tracking of the Venue SQ. So stay tuned for that. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. For now, thank you so much for watching and if you'd like, check out some of my other videos.